Hey everybody, welcome back to Salvage Knits. I'm Sam. I'm Kat. And um, we did not take a long time getting to get this done again. Again, high five. Yes, we are. Ooh, that was a good high five too. Feeling it. Feeling that a little bit? Yes. A little bit of a sting. Nice. Um, so we have a lot uh, to talk about, a lot of really cool stuff. And some really cool things for you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead and start jump right with, in. Start with this. Have y'all heard about Nomadic Knits? Because I like how not, you're waiting for them to answer. To, I am. I'm waiting for a response, <laughs> everyone. So um, we had the pleasure of running into the ladies of Nomadic Knits at the um, Magpie, Magpie Open House. Yes, at the Magpie Open House during the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that whole weekend. Mm -hmm. um, it was Melissa and Becky. They are rad chicks. They Absolutely. Were so awesome. Um, we got to talk to them for a really long time about like the whole concept behind Nomadic Knits. And uh, they started, their first issue was released in um, September of 2018. And so I'm going to let you talk about a little bit about like the idea behind it. I'm kind of in love with the idea. There are so many cool knitting magazines out there and there are, they all have a different take and a different approach. And this one is really unique in what it is. They, instead of just, you know, compiling, you know, a bunch of designs or, you know, focusing on a specific fiber or focusing on a specific um, style, what they actually do is they focus on a specific area yeah. and each issue is completely based on that area and the designers and the fibers and everything that's involved in this issue is all from this one specific area. In this case, in issue three, it's Arizona and New Mexico, mm -hmm. which is close to so this one's heart. I'm absolutely in love with it. Reading some of these articles and some of the pictures in it just kind of evoke my childhood, my grandmother uh, lived in Arizona. We used to visit her out there. And this is just to me like. You have so much of her jewelry that as soon as I like, <laughs> looked through this issue, I was like, oh my gosh, Kat is going to flip out. She's going to love it. And so many of the, the designs also are, they have that same kind of emotional pull for me because mm -hmm. of the area. And, and a really cool aesthetic. A really, really cool aesthetic. Yeah. Absolutely. The way they uh, photograph, because their photo shoots are actually done in the area that yeah. they are uh, mm -hmm. focusing on. And it's just so cool. And I love that it has that ability to pull you into an area, not just, you know, we're knitters. So obviously we'll be drawn to it because it's knitting and the patterns are right. cool. But there's also that that extra piece to it that just yeah. made it really, really, really exciting. And the way they described it to us was kind of like wine. You yeah. know, you buy a bottle of French wine and it's very much the, the climate, the soil, the uh, the people who are involved in the process mm -hmm. of bottling that what French it wine, was. the year, yeah. it all has an impact. Exactly. And compared to a California wine, completely different. And the reasoning, you know, climate, soil, people, there's so right. much that goes into these two different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like how they kind of talk about their designs, their knitting, their issues on that same kind of yes. concept. It's Absolutely. so cool. And they also, oh. um, speaking of wine, um, I think one of the coolest pieces of this for me, I, I thought they have a um, drink um, recipe that is inspired, again, by the area, by the region. And so um, every um, issue has its own little drink. And so we actually made the drink out of this issue. Decided to try it out. This is, um, it's a, another tequila sunrise is the name of the drink. So we're going to try this out. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to Nomadic Knits. I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't drinking it before we started. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It's so good. I'm not going to apologize for um, that. And for this reason alone, you should be getting the magazine because uh -huh. it's, like, it's refreshing. It's really, really <laughs> neat that they have everything that's just inspired by this area. Um, they have their first issue and their second issue. They had um, New York State as well as Florida. And I thought it was also really cool of them to start and have even two issues out of three be in warmer regions mm -hmm. because we have so many knitters that are in those warmer areas. And so often they kind of get like pushed a little to the side because, you know, knitting keeps you really warm. So there's a lot of sweaters and stuff out there, but there's not so much to be had for warmer weather, especially when it comes to the fibers that are being used, but they have that in here as well. I mean, you can see right here, they've got like a headband. Yeah. Like, which is something, oh my gosh. Yeah. I could knit a headband. Yes. Absolutely. And they also have, like, this is one of the ones that I'm... It's about the tank top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful it's so neat. tank top. Really well made. Really exciting. That's one that has to go on my needles. That's the Aho. I love the motif on the back on this one. Oh, here. Yeah. oh, yes. 
this pattern Again, that pattern much in there. That one inspired by the area. I need that particular um, sweater in my life. Yeah. So badly. And so many of the patterns in here for me are things that I'm like, oh, casting that on, casting that on, casting that on. Yeah. It is a problem. It, there is a problem with oh. this particular with with there's too many patterns and I don't have enough time. Yes. <laughs> I need enough to, I need more time because there's so much cool stuff. And I think the other it's not necessarily a problem. I think a really cool thing about this industry is knitting has been around forever mm -hmm. and people still are out there so creative, so talented that they can find new takes on it. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, there's, we were talking, there's so many different um, publications out there. They're all neat in their own way. And, but this one is just so unique. And I, I think it's really cool that there are people out there that can come up with this stuff. And speaking of cool. Yes, they are so awesome. So they gave us something to give y'all. They gave us a, um, a code for Ravelry. So if you go onto Ravelry and you go to Nomadic Knits and you want to download digital copies of issues one, two, or three, or one and two, or two and three, or one and three, whatever you want, whatever order you got, you want, um, you type in the Ravelry code uh, Selvage, S-E-L-V-A-G-E, and they'll give you 20% off through the end of the year. They so be good for the whole year. So take advantage of that coupon yes. code and get your hands on at least, if not all, of the digital copies. And especially of this one. Because Kat loves this one. I love this one. It's really, really good. So um, thank you very much, uh, Becky and Melissa. Mm -hmm. We really, really appreciate it. And we can't wait to crank yeah. out some of these knits to share with you. So go get on Ravelry, use the code, download your digital copies, and make some drinks. Make some drinks. Again. Um, so yeah, go get that. And we'll post all of the information again in notes. What? Just swallowing. Oh, okay. I thought I, thought I did something wrong. <laughs> no, not that I know of. Okay. All right. Now that we've had a little bit to drink. I think it's time that we can, um, you know, take the edge off that we can delve into a segment of Knits, Knits of, of Shame. shame. Um, I think both of ours this time are pretty epic for the most part. Oh, yeah. Part. When I think about the implications of yours, I'm a little, like, I remember you calling me at the time, like, in tears at Literally work. Literally crying. She called me at crying work. at work. Yeah. And we, like, she was at work, and I was at work, and... You were at work, and I called and was crying. I work in a high school. You shouldn't so, cry in high school. I mean, a lot of there's a lot do. of people crying in high school. Um, so <sighs> background, background. My sister is getting married in February, so it's January, and she's like, "Hey, it's it was a second wedding, so it wasn't really big, but she wanted to just have kind of like a cute little. She wanted like a tool skirt and like a kind of a cropped long sleeve sweater." it was winter and, and it's she, really cool that she wanted yeah, you to be involved and to make it really for her neat. so she asked me if I would make one for her so I started searching for patterns to make and I found um one in pom-pom and now the name of this is going to escape me of course but I'll put it up here so I'm making um this adorable crop sweater I'm using uh magpie fibers um DK in Fior de Latte. It's like a cream color. And I'm holding it together with a mohair because I was like, it's going to give it a really cool halo. And it has a beautiful halo. So I had a natural, completely undyed mohair that I was knitting it with. Well, we were away actually at Vogue Knitting. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I ran out, not yet, because it's, it's a thing. I'm a little embarrassed about it. So we were at, we were there and I ran out of mohair. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh which I don't even know how I ran out of all hair or why I didn't do calculations. I have no idea. I think I just assumed in my head, you made there's so much mohair. How could I possibly run out? I did twice. Two times I ran out. Mm -hmm, so I ran out. So I went and grabbed some more mohair thinking, this will be, I mean, this will work. How different is mohair? It was silk and mohair, same blend. I'm knitting with it. Everything's looking great. Going great. Get home. Still knitting it. I am down to the finished one whole sleeve. I'm on the other sleeve. And for the first time, I was sitting in a classroom and I had it laid out up on a table and right underneath of a window, there's a very clear line of demarcation of where I had the original natural mohair with the white mohair that I had purchased. Now, what you are, have failed to include <laughs> was the fact that this was three days before the wedding. <laughs> three days before. No, it was two days. 
It was two days before the wedding. Well, we're talking days, does like, it matter? I was like, whatever, it's a sleeve. Like, I'll be dead and I just gotta block it. It'll be totally fine. Um, so I'm looking at it and I will put up a picture of my actual reaction that my coworker got of me. I am literally sitting under a table with my head in my hands. I don't know what to do because in every other light, it had looked totally fine, the same in sunlight, which obviously at some point my sister's going to be outside. Yeah, <laughs> Pictures, everything. I mean, it, it, it might have been a small wedding, but you can't be like, sorry, you can't go outside for any of your <laughs> you, photos. You may not go outdoors. So, oh, so awful. I didn't know what to do. So I actually ended up like leaving work early, taking time. I went up to a mall, bought like five different sweaters that I could find, took them to her house. It was like in tears. I felt so horrible. There was no way I was going to be able to fix this. Well, and I mean, are you done yet? So, no. So then, uh, so let me show you the sweater first. It's adorable. And to be honest with you. So I don't know if you can see it in you this can't, light. You can't see it in this light. Um, okay. So right around, I can see it here. So here, cream colored mohair. Here, white. Also evident on the sleeve because you can't see it. You can't see it I'm a little bummed out. Really I am going to put up pictures and then it goes white. Oh, I see it right there. That yeah. line right there. Yeah. See, it doesn't look so bad. People are going to be like, it wasn't that bad. We'll um, just put I'll a put up, up pictures. It's we'll just put not pictures up good. Over there. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to finish knitting this because it's I an have adorable almost sweater. a whole sweater here. So um, I went to go finish and again, ran out of mohair. So I, you know, it's now what, June? It's June. It's June. I just got mohair. I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to over dye the whole thing and hope to God that you can dye it in such a way that you can't see the difference. I really, really hope that the different mohairs take the dye Shut differently. Your mouth. No, I will be, this will be the most, then, uh, then we'll just have a whole nother episode. An extra, a dye work of shame. A dye work. So, yeah, luckily I know some um, pretty rad people over at Magpie, so they're going to help me out. Um, so, hopefully this will... This is sal salvageable. No longer... Salvage? Salvage? Be salvage. A nightmare. We're salvage. That's salvageable. Yeah. My sister's wedding was fine. Yes, it was. She, she looked was fine. beautiful. She looked really cute. I found a really cute sweater. And like she was totally... Or something. She was totally like, whatever. She was like, whatever. Because I was like, she's going to be... I mean, she's you called me and we're kind of like... I was like, she's going to kill me. She'd be so sad. You were trying to like figure out how you could run away from home. I was like, I'm just going to get in the car and just keep driving. <laughs> no, that's not um, me again. But they were, she was so sweet about it. It ended up not being, she was like, whatever. It's really small. It was just family. So it ended up being okay. But yeah, I still love that picture of me under the table when I found out. My bits of shame was not. There was no saving it. This was. And actually, this has kind of stuck with me. I don't have a, um, I don't have it anymore because I definitely frogged this multiple times. I tried to knit Andrea Mowry's, um, the Wanderer Mukluks. Mm -hmm. You made them. Yep. They were gorgeous. I love them. You inspired me. Thanks. I saw yours and I was like, oh, I want to do those. And I used, um, I remember I used uh, Shepherd's Wool. Mm -hmm. And a beautiful teal color and a white color, which is, I think, the color she used in hers. Yeah. I, was, I made the yellow ones and you made, I made the, the teal ones. ones. And I was like, this is going to be great. I made the first one fit perfectly. M mind you, what you're also failing to mention, first color work project ever. It was my first ever color work project. And first socks ever. And so it was a first for both. <laughs> yeah. And this was, this was quite some time ago. This was years this ago. This was years ago. Yeah. This was, I want to say 2015. Shut your mouth. Anyway, so I knit them up and one, it fit perfectly. So I was feeling confident. I was feeling good. It looked great. The color work was on, you know, just on. Everything was, was right. So I knit the second one and I was all done. I put them on and oh my God. Um, Somehow I made two different sizes. This one is for a normal person. And this is for someone with, I don't know, giant feet. It was like a, it was like for Hagrid. It was Hagrid sock. Okay, I had a Hagrid so. sock and a me sock. And I'm, I mean, I got larger feet, but not that large. And I don't, and I, I was like, okay, so I got comfortable. That's what I told myself. I'm like, I was comfortable the second time. So I, I, I knit loose. My gauge changed between one sock to the other. Cause the first was my first try. Yeah. So I pulled out the first sock and tried again. 
I made that one just as small yeah. again. And I was like, I kept trying and trying. And finally I was like, no, done, done, I'm done. And I'm going to tell you, I have not to this day made a pair of gloves, a pair of socks, a pair of anything. Because you're only, you're only making one. I only make one. She only makes one. I have thing. not yet delved into. But you do sleeves. I do sleeves. They don't come out different sizes. I think a lot of it is my is now um, just fear. I don't even know if it's fear. It's Anger. just maybe it's that. Are you just like angry at it? I, like, I'm, I'm angry at doubles. Spite. But I have I do have yarn, and I was thinking about trying a pair of socks. Maybe you should try. Maybe get back on that horse. I, I might. I might. Yeah, we do have a picture that we're gonna put up. We do of the two different size socks. They're very different. They're sizes. very different. Yeah, but so knitting doesn't always come out the way you think it's it going to. It does not. And then when you think you know what you did wrong, and you go back and try to fix it, or when you're like, I've been knitting for years, I got this, and then things like that happen. And a day before your sister's wedding, you don't it all have the sweater goes you were supposed wrong. to make. So, so that is um, knits of shame. Knits of shame. Um, uh, we would love for other people to share their knits of shame. Absolutely. So um, we'll put up the hashtag knits of shame. Please share with us so we can see everyone else's knits of shame because I think it's a really good thing to see that you know we always put up like our perfect stuff on Instagram. But I think we let's put up our hot messes. Let's put up our hot messes. Hot mess knitting. Let's see how that works yes, out. Absolutely. I mean, people are doing that the like hashtag like junk drawer thing. Let's show our our we did not knit this correctly. No nope. stuff. Knits of shame. So, absolutely. So we'd love to see everyone else's as well. Um it looked like I was making fun of you, but I wasn't. It's okay. You did you this were. with your finger and I went at you went like that and I was like, me too. Why not? So great right um, now. So up next our favorite section, style your knits. Yes. And this week, I did exactly what I said I was going to do last episode. Mm -hmm. um, I showed you guys last week my Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Mallory. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show you it styled a different way. Instead of showing you another thing styled in a different way, I wanted to show you a different way to style the same thing. Yes. Um, I really do love this shawl. It has become... Part of you. Part of me. <laughs> yep. It has. I have just... It, it, it's... I love it. Yep. And even in the warmer weather... I'm able to style it in a way where it really works. Yeah. So today I've styled it with just a mint green swing dress. And, you know, it's a really simple, not boring dress, but it's a really, really simple plain dress. And having that night shift shawl over top of it gives it a huge yes. pop. It makes it, you know, interesting. And I uh, threw on some chucks because I can't wear a dress without trying my best to make it a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> So that is how I styled my knits today, but I also wanted to bring attention to, and you have one on as well, yes. my new bracelet slash shawl cuff. I am absolutely, and it's here in my style, I use this to style my night shift and I've been wearing it a lot with my night shift. I'm obsessed with these. We both got ours from the same place. These are both made by Wendy from Jam Knits. Mm -hmm. And she, I mean, she takes vintage belts and she cuts them up and repurposes them into these awesome, awesome, awesome accessories that you can use to hold your shawl on. And I got to say, it is hard to wear a shawl sometimes. Yeah. Especially a shawl as big as the night shift shawl and being able to kind of like hook it into place. Yes. Is so convenient. And also it's just I had cool. never thought about doing that before. I know, me neither. You, had, you purchased one of these uh, like when she first mm -hmm. put them out there because it's on her Instagram handle, which we'll put up here so that everybody can see it. Um, and go check it out. But um, you had bought one a while ago, and then you had used it as that. And then when we were at Stitches West, I think, in the Farmer's Daughter's Fiber booth, mm -hmm. Wendy works um, for Farmer's Daughter's Fiber, and she's often seen in the booth, um, they had them used for the same thing. So, and then I was Well, like, I'm sure I, I got the idea from one. somebody I saw on Instagram wearing yeah. it. And I've just been obsessed. I love the idea. I think it's such a cool way to accessorize your knits and not just wear your knits, but have the ability to keep wearing jewelry because jewelry is fun. Yay. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, definitely go check her out. She's pretty awesome. She sells them every once in a while. She just goes and finds a whole bunch of vintage leather belts and then she puts them up on Instagram, you know, by letter and you just DM her. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to get mine. I got mine just last month and I love it. And this is my second one because mm -hmm. I might have left one in Scotland, which makes me so also, sad. Yeah. yeah. Also, you, you like to collect that kind of stuff. That's just cool. Oh, I do. No, it's also just a really cool bracelet. Yeah, I, I wear this thing all the time. I don't think I've taken it off since I got it. 
be honest with you. Except for when I shower. But you take it off when I bathe. It's but it's that's important. it. Same thing. Um, good thing so um, for mine, I have something new. I did a test knit for Shay of Knit and Crochet. Um, it's her as if tee, mm -hmm. but um, and that one came out a while back. But she's kind of rewritten the pattern, so she asked for new testers to read through the new pattern. So I put in for it, and I got picked, and so I made an as if tee. And so here it is. I just finished it. Just finished blocking. I adore it. I think it's so fun. I love that it's so reminiscent of Clueless. Um, and the know, mohair. Our childhood. Our mohair obsession is getting out of hand. Well, is it? I don't think it's a problem. I think it's I'm awesome. literally knitting sleeves <laughs> in mohair right now. So great. I kind of blame you. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I will take full responsibility. So I used for the main color, this is Autumn and Indigo. This is her Persephone so colorway. So I used that. It is a worsted. The pattern does call for an Aran weight yarn, but I was able just to go by going up one needle size, get engaged. Um, and then I used Farmer's Daughter Fiber Mohair. It's the Silk Mohair Blend. And this is in the colorway One Stab. So um, this was such a fast knit. Mm -hmm. Really, really fun to knit. Um, so here I have paired it with a skirt that I found. I, I, I don't remember which store I purchased the skirt in, but it's like a high-waisted skirt because this is a crop top. And I paired it with, um, you know, tried to go back to that whole 90s vibe. Went with the clogs. And um, I just, I like it with the really high-waisted stuff. I think it looks really, really cool. So there's not too much of my little belly showing, but just a little, just little, a little sneaky peek, just a tiny bit. So um, that's how I styled this knit. And we got some great comments about the styling your knits. So we actually wanted to ask you guys to show us how you style your knits. So maybe we can do a thing where whatever you styled, which was the nightshare shawl, and I styled the as if tea, any of our viewers that have knit these things up, please go take pictures of how you style them and hashtag us and we'll put it up in our stories so that people can see all the different ways to style this because obviously not everybody has our sense of style. It's not how they style everything. And we've said that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You might hate how yeah. we're styling things, but you know, this, how, is, this, this is how we yeah. style it and we would love to see how you do it. We'd love to give uh, we're giving you ideas and we would love to get ideas from you guys. And we've been saying that yeah. all along is wanting to have some feedback from you. Yeah, so absolutely. if you guys can share with us, we would love to share with everybody else so that everybody can see what everybody's doing with this stuff. So you can so, kind of get some ideas, same way that you got the idea for the little cuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, sharing ideas with everybody. So, so please do us a favor. Yes. And this week we're going to focus, or not this week, but between now and our next video, mm -hmm. if we're going to focus on the night shift shawl and the as if tea. So yes. if you have any pictures of yourself and you can sh send us your styling. Yeah. Hashtag style your knits and maybe also hashtag salvage knits just so you make sure that we definitely see it. And we'll put everything up in our stories and share it with everybody. I think that'd be really cool. It's a really cool way to branch out and get some more ideas and share with you guys. Yeah. So I think that's everything this week. Yeah. I think that's all we have. So, Again, on that note, go use the coupon code that we got from the lovely ladies of Nomadic Knits. Make yourself with another tequila sunrise um, and enjoy this mm -hmm. summer weather and get out there and knit. Happy knitting. Happy knitting. I think it was too. I liked it. No, it you too. ruined oh, it. Well, well, so did Zoe. I'm peeing. I won't hide. Thanks for letting us know every issue and so we have made them oh Aww. man sorry hi everybody this is salvage knits and we're back <laughs> <laughs> wow with some serious enthusiasm i mean what's wrong with you? i guys? love you i'm just trying to get this done sammy joe's so annoying i'm the worst hi everybody You need to finish the rest of that? Nah. No? Just leave that hanging. Okay. Hanging. <laughs> hangling. I was going to say dangling and hanging. I like hanging. And I came out with hangling. I like hangling a lot. Maybe I'll okay. take the edge off a little bit for a um, special, special segment. 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 Say, she's been drinking for a while. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She has not. Um, <sighs> yeah. I don't care if it isn't. <laughs> That's what happens when you start drinking. <laughs>